You know, there's a plethora of running shoes out there, but there's two design parameters that if you're not paying attention to, you really should. Welcome to Aegis Runner, I'm Ralph. Before we talk about design parameters and running shoes, I'd appreciate it if you would subscribe to my channel by clicking that subscribe icon down in the corner of this video. Thank you so much. Running shoe shopping can be int intimidating. There are just so many choices out there, not only colors and styles, but designs and, and a myriad of parameters. And you can spend a lot of time on the shoe review side studying them. And I encourage you to do that so you can make an intelligent choice in your running shoes. But there's two design parameters universal to all shoes that are really important. You ought to know where your shoes are and, and what you want to be as you go forward. And those two parameters are stack height and heel to toe drop. Before we dive into those two parameters, this just do a basic anatomy of a shoe. And I like to break the shoe into three parts. We have the upper, and that's what kind of covers the top of your foot. You know, road running shoes, typically they want to make it so it breathes and, and gives you some cooling effect. Trail shoes, they kind of want to make the upper so dust and dirt and maybe moisture can't get in there. And then below the upper, we have the midsole. You can't see the midsole. That's what's inside the shoe. That's the insert that's in there and then the rubber and the material underneath it. That's what provides some of your cushioning. And then you have the outer sole. That's kind of the bottom. That gives you your tread pattern and gives you more response and cushioning through the material in, in, the, in the outsole of the shoe. Um, and what we're going to talk about more relates to the midsole and the outsole. So let's start with stack height. Stack height relates to the amount of material underneath your foot. It's kind of how far your foot is above the road. And that's a function of the midsole and the outsole. More of the thickness, not necessarily the materials. And there can be a range in stack heights in shoes. On the low end, 10 to 12 millimeters is a very low end stack height. On the high end, they could be over 35, 40, even 45 millimeters in stack height. Let's put that in perspective. I pulled out some paper here. That, this paper here is about 10 millimeters thick. That's a low stack height. <laughs> this book is about 40 millimeter stack height. Let me put one on top of the other, and you can see the difference in thickness in these two material, in these two uh, uh, examples here. So it's kind of a wide range. Is there, is there a good stack height? Well, it depends on you and your running and what's important to you. So let's talk about the low end. At that low end, that 10 to 12 millimeters, what does that give you? Give you a really good feel for the road. You're going to feel connected to the road. The shoe is more flexible, so it may give you a more natural running gait. It's kind of a minimal, minimalist uh, running shoe. In other words, it's kind of like running barefoot, only not barefoot, so it's a little more natural gait. But what are the takeaways from that? Uh, what do you give up by giving that better feel? Well, you give up impact resistance since there's not as much cushion in that low stack height shoe you're going to get more of the impact in your legs from when you run and, and you're running on pavement or the trail. So do you want more of a road feel, more of a flexibility, or do you want more impact resistance? If you want more impact resistance, then we want to go to that higher stack height. So at the higher stack height, that's got more material in it. It's going to be a stiffer shoe. You're not going to feel the road as well. It may in fact impact your running gait. Uh, however, it's going to be a very plush cushion ride. It's going to absorb a lot of that impact from the road or the trail as you're out running. I always like to think of the high stack height stiffness as like, you ever get a new pair of dress shoes and they're really stiff, you walk kind of funny. And that's kind of an exaggeration, but if you have a much stiffer shoe, it may impact your running gait compared to a lower stack height shoe. So what's the right answer? There is no right answer. It's a personal preference. I kind of like to be a mid-range guy. I'm kind of in the 19, 20, up to 25 millimeter stack height. My road shoes are these Saucony Freedom 3s. They're about a 20, I think they're about a 23 millimeter stack height in the heel, about 19 in the toe. Uh, and that works very good for me. Now, I do have a higher stack height trail shoe. I got the Saucony Exus that has a 31.5 millimeter stack height. Why did I get that? Well, I'm going to be doing a trail marathon. I'm going to be on my feet a lot of hours, a lot of day, and I want the extra cushioning to maybe help with my joints and, and my uh, tiredness uh, throughout the day. And I thought a little higher stack height would help that. Uh, but if you're not sure what you want, get in the middle of the road. If you don't know what your stack height is on your shoes now, go research it. A lot of places have it, the manufacturer, places like Running Warehouse, or a lot of the shoe review sites will have that information. Go check that out. Now, the next parameter is heel to toe offset, or offset, or heel drop, or just drop. That, I think, is one of the most important design parameters in a shoe that you should really focus on. What is it? 
Well, if you were to take your shoes off and stand on the floor, your heel and your toe would be at the same level. That's zero offset. Uh, most running shoes do not have zero offset. Back in the 50 years ago when uh, tennis shoes were being made, they all were kind of zero offset. Then the running craze happened and people started getting uh, Achilles tendonitis and some injuries in their, in their Achilles tendon and their calves. And so the manufacturer decided to add some cushion in the heel to help prevent injuries. There came about offset. So what does that stack height do? Well, imagine extending your leg out with your toes pointed up to, to, the, to the ceiling. If you were to point your toes forward, what does that do? All of a sudden you feel your calves relax, right? When your toes are pointed up, you feel a little tension in your calves and you point them down, all of a sudden they've relaxed. So by putting some uh, height in the heel, it's getting the heel higher than the toes, which is my example of putting the, the toes down. It relaxes that calf. So you're going to be running with less tension in your calf. You're less likely to injure your calf or your tendons when you have some heel uh, stack in there. So there was a study done about five years ago when they look at offset or heel drop in runners to see if it affected injury rates. So they looked at kind of a low, medium, high uh, offset. And what they found is injury rates didn't change. All three running uh, offsets got about the same injuries, but it didn't impact where they got their injuries. Again, the lower offsets had more injuries in the lower part of the leg, in, in their calves, maybe their Achilles tendon. The higher the offset, they have more injuries in their upper leg, like knees and hips. A long time ago, when I was back in college, there was a shoe craze called Earth Shoes. And they actually had a negative heel drop, a negative offset, where the heel sat below the toe. Uh, it's kind of a weird feeling. I never had them, but people who did have them <laughs> really complained about calf pain. Why? Because it's putting more tension on their calves. Had it been reversed, like running shoes today, where they have a positive offset, they wouldn't have had that calf pain. So again, there's kind of a trade-off. You can go high heel heights and maybe relieve tension on your calves and your Achilles tendon. Maybe you might develop some problems in your knees and your hips, or you can go low, uh, offset and maybe save your knees and your hips. That's kind of where I am. I'm a low offset guy. I like zero and right now I'm running with four millimeters. Those Saucony Freedoms I was showing earlier, those have four, four millimeter offset and I like those because I'm a knee guy, meaning I have more problems with my knees. So I kind of want to do anything to keep pressure and, and more stress off my knees. So I like a low offset shoe. Uh, but again, it's a personal preference. You have to decide what works good for you. So if you don't know what the offset is in your running shoes day, go find out. Now, if you decide you want to make a change, don't make a big change in offset. Don't go from a 12 millimeter offset to a four. That's a big change. Drop up or down two or maybe four millimeters at the most and give your legs a chance to adjust to that. So where do I sum all this up? So again, it's a personal preference on stack height and offset, but I think it's important to know where you're at and how are your legs, how do they feel? How is your gait? Uh, how is your pain and, and any tiredness you have? And make changes accordingly. Don't make big changes, make little changes from shoe to shoe. There's nothing wrong with being middle of the road. Get a middle stack height, get a middle offset like eight to 10 millimeters and go from there and just enjoy running and make changes over time as you understand your body and how it runs and any issues you may have over time and make changes based on that. But those two parameters, stack height and uh, offset are kind of like two knobs you can turn depending on the shoes you pick. Pick those that, that will be best for you. Hey, I hope you learned a little something about running shoes today. I really appreciate you watching the video. If you wouldn't mind, please subscribe to my channel by clicking that subscribe icon. I look forward to talking to you again real soon. Thank you.